as we're doing this. Now, a challenge for this that we're not going to go through is if, if you want to, you can uh, allow the sun to move. Okay. Because uh, in real so life, would, the sun does move. It would wobble. Right? It would wobble a little bit. Yeah, just, just a little bit. And the cool thing is that um, that effect, the effect that the planet has on the sun, right? So the sun's going to move just a little bit as the planet's moving around it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that is very useful for extrasolar planets, right? The wobble? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So one of the ways they can detect extrasolar planets is that, is that as these planets go around, they, they, the star that they're orbiting will move slightly, like just by a very small amount. But if you have a sensitive enough spectrometer, you can actually figure that out, and so you can detect if there's a planet orbiting that star. And that's, that's, that's how the first extrasolar planets were detected, actually. Astronomy is cool. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> how would you... So let, we're not going to go through this, but how would you modify the code to make it so that the sun could move? Let's see here. Our cool. X sun and our Y sun here. Mm-hmm. Um, that might be different. And let's see what we have up here. Hmm. So update location here, right? So we're updating the location on the planet, right? We would need to add the X sun and the Y sun here. That's right. Okay. Um, so we'd also need to give the sun uh, its own velocity, right? Mm-hmm. So we need to add some variables for that. Right. Um, what about in this section? Update velocities. Update velocities, right? It would need to be updated con- constantly or 60 mm-hmm. times a second just as well. Yep. Um, so you guys already have a lot of the pieces to actually get the sun to move. So uh, so when you get a chance, go ahead and try that out. Um, we're not, we're not going to tell you how to do it. That's for you guys to figure out. 